It's natural when you're new to Royal Caribbean to want to learn all the tips, secrets, and hints you can. So that way your Royal Caribbean cruise experience can be the best. These tried and true strategies are something many Royal Caribbean fans have come to learn after taking many cruises over the years. After taking many cruises over the years, I've certainly come up with my own list of tips and tricks that I've learned from other cruising experts who've collectively cruised far more than I ever could. So if you're new to Royal Caribbean, I've got today some tips and must-dos that Royal Caribbean pros know about taking a cruise and you should too. Number one, get an early check-in time at the first opportunity. People that cruise all the time will check in for their cruise on the Royal Caribbean app as early as possible. Now, Royal Caribbean opens up the check-in for cruises at 45 days prior to the cruise beginning. Cruise veterans will not only check in at 45 days before their cruise, but they will stay up late so they can be among the first to check in. The first chance to check in is at midnight based on the time zone of your sailing. And that's when these people do their check-in. Why should you stay up late and do this at midnight? Because they want to get the first available check-in time slot. Each time slot only has a set amount of people that it will allow. And the earlier you check in at the terminal, the sooner you get on board the ship. Whether you arrive at the port at 11 a.m. or 2 p.m. on the first day, the price does not change for what you paid for your cruise fare. So wanting to get on board sooner makes a lot of sense. Our second tip is also about being early and it's related to dining. Because it's a really good idea to book dining in advance. Royal Caribbean ships offer some amazing specialty dining options. And if you want to ensure there's a table waiting for you, then you ought to book something before you get on board your ship. Royal Caribbean allows guests to make reservations for its specialty restaurants online via its Cruise Planner website. By making reservations online, you'll guarantee yourself not just a table, but the day and time that fits your schedule exactly. This is especially important on formal nights or holidays when many other people want to do something special as well and they usually opt for a specialty restaurant. Now, if you have a dining package, the best thing to do is have a plan of when and where you'd like to eat prior to boarding. And then when you get on board the ship, go to one of the specialty restaurants or one of the crew members selling dining packages when you get on board and make reservations. The key is to do this as soon as you get on board because slots do fill up quickly. Number three, as far as booking cruises, Royal Caribbean veterans know the key to getting a good deal on a cruise and the perfect stateroom as well is to book as far in advance as possible. Royal Caribbean pros will tell you the best way to get a good deal on a cruise is to book as early as you can, ideally years in advance. By booking early, you'll often find the best rates available. Because cruise fares operate on supply and demand basis, the less supply there is, like the amount of staterooms available to book, the higher the prices. So, booking one or two years early, you'll often find the best rates. If you ever strike up a conversation with a Royal Caribbean pro, ask them when they book their cruise because often the answer is measured in years. Number four is a related tip, is not when you book your cruise, but when you actually take your cruise. If you're wondering if there's an ideal time to book a cruise for the best price, it's not so much about when you book as when you want to actually cruise. While there are many times of the year that you can offer deeper savings than others, like maybe Cyber Monday, finding lowest fares has more to do with when you're actually going to cruise. So booking early is important, as we just said, but also when you actually take your cruise in general, you'll find lower fares if you're willing to cruise during the shoulder seasons and or when school is usually in session. This includes the month of January minus the New Year's holiday, most February, the month of May, the month of September, the month of October, and the first two weeks of November and the first two weeks of December. Picking Royal Caribbean cruises that sail during these times of the year often net the lowest fares because it's when less people have the opportunity or inclination to go on a cruise. Number five, here's another tip that I love to share. Read old cruise compasses to know what to expect. So you just pick the perfect Royal Caribbean cruise for you and your family. It sounds like you'll have a blast, but you might be wondering what events, activities, and specials may be offered on your sailing. There's no way to know in absolute terms what your upcoming Royal Caribbean cruise will or will not offer, but Royal Caribbean pros will consult a previous cruise compass to see what was available on those similar sailings to get a ballpark idea of what to expect. Generally speaking, Royal Caribbean sailings on a particular ship do not change that much from week to week in terms of activities or entertainment offered. There will be some discrepancies, but an old cruise compass can give you a pretty good expectation of things to plan around. By reading an old cruise compass, you can prepare yourself for activities and events that you might want to participate in, such as themed dance parties, sporting events, and anything else in between. 
Now, if you're wondering where do you find an old cruise compass, well, good news. We have an archive of them over at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Just look at our main menu. You'll find the link over there. Number six, something Royal Caribbean pros really love doing is taking Royal Caribbean cruises on the quote-unquote smaller ships. These days, any Royal Caribbean commercial you probably see on TV shows off the amazing things on its newest and biggest cruise ships. And there are really, really awesome and fun things to do, and they're amazing and stunning. No doubt about it. But Royal Caribbean veterans know that it's just as fun and important to consider the smaller ships in the fleet. Royal Caribbean has a fleet of around 27 ships or so, depending on the time of year you're listening to this video, and they all come in different shapes and sizes. While the larger, newer ships gain the lion's share of attention, many veterans will tell you the virtues of the smaller ships in the fleet. Radiance, Vision, and even Voyager-class ships all offer amazing experiences that cannot be matched on larger ships. These smaller ships can get you to ports of calls that large ships cannot access, as well as offer a more intimate experience in relationship with your fellow guests. Not to mention, the smaller ships also come with a lower price tag. There's absolutely nothing wrong with sailing on an Oasis or Quantum class ship, but consider every class in the fleet for your next Royal Caribbean cruise because Royal Caribbean superfans love them all. Number seven may not sound like much of a secret, but the truth is guests that have cruised time and time again with Royal Caribbean embrace the customer loyalty program known as the Crown and Anchor Society. So my tip here is to sign up for Crown and Anchor Society. Essentially, Crown and Anchor Society rewards guests for taking multiple Royal Caribbean cruises with special discounts on board, offers on upcoming cruises, and exclusive events. There's no cost to join Crown and Anchor Society, and the discounts you receive on board alone are worth signing up for. Number eight, use a travel agent. Whether this is your first cruise or you've cruised a ton, I always recommend using a travel agent. Simply put, travel agents work to make your vacation planning easier on you, and they're paid by the cruise line, not you, for your business. You literally have nothing to lose by using a good travel agent for first-time cruisers. A good travel agent, by the way, is to find somebody who is a great resource on information on Royal Caribbean in general. Moreover, they can answer the kind of personal questions that no blog post or YouTube video can really tackle. Oftentimes, many first-time cruisers have questions about their particular circumstances, and a good travel agent can leverage their own experience to provide the right answer for you. In addition, Travel agents are knowledgeable about the many discounts and offers available by the cruise line. If there are pricing questions or changes that be made to reservation, they're the ones that call Royal Caribbean and sort out the details for you. That frees you up to do something far more interesting and fun, like watch these awesome YouTube videos about Royal Caribbean. Essentially, the travel agent is your advocate for any concerns that you may have, including when you're on the ship. All too often, new cruisers try to do it all themselves, because they can, and it leads to time and effort that could have been saved by using a travel agent. When considering which travel agent to use, ensure you pick one that is deeply knowledgeable about Royal Caribbean and does not charge any fees to you for any changes you make to your reservation. Talk to them before committing to book with them and ask questions about your experience and level of service they provide so you can feel comfortable in how they will work for you. If you're wondering, I recommend MEI Travel. I use them for all my bookings, even my family. And I've been using them for many, many years. They are a sponsor of our site, but it's worth mentioning that it's who I use for my cruises. And my last tip is something you're actually doing right now, which is learning from others. Let's face it, no one knows it all, including me. And that's why veteran cruisers often look for ways to congregate online and share their experiences. The internet is perfect for sharing our collective Royal Caribbean knowledge. And there are some great resources you should consider when looking to learn more about Royal Caribbean. Now, at the risk of sounding self-serving, of course, you're welcome. RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com offers more than just blog posts as a means of helping others have a better cruise. We have message boards, you can listen to our podcast, chat with us on Facebook, or of course, here on our YouTube channel. In addition, other places like Facebook have become a wealth of Royal Caribbean information, and there are a lot of great Facebook groups that you might consider joining. And I'd also be remiss if I didn't mention the Cruise Critic message boards as another great online resource of Royal Caribbean information. So hopefully all those resources will help give you the information you need for a great cruise. And honestly, these nine tips are what I do for every single cruise and I think everyone else should do as well. Stand on the shoulders of giants, they say, and this is definitely true of planning a cruise vacation. Let me know in the comments below, what are your top tips? What are things you've learned from other Royal Caribbean pros? And if you're a pro, if you've been cruising for years and years and years, share in the comments below your top tips. Let me hear your top three Royal Caribbean tips in the comments below. Looking forward to reading those down there. While you're below our video, please hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube Plus don't have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.